on September the 1st, 1524, Dasodius Erasmus of Rotterdam, a Roman Catholic apologist, published a work entitled The Diatribe Concerning Free Will. In this work, he explains his meaning of free choice by saying, we mean a power of the human will by which a man can apply himself to things which lead to eternal salvation or turn away from them. Martin Luther, the German reformer, responded with on the enslaved will or the bondage of the will. Luther maintained the full Augustinian position against the semi-Pelagian position of Erasmus. It will be difficult to overstate the significance of this book. Luther considered it to be his most important work because it spoke to the issues that went to the very heart of what it was to be a Christian. Dr. B.B. Warfield, the great prince and theologian, called the bondage of the will the manifesto of the Protestant Reformation. Luther's book drew a line in the sand between the Roman Catholic view of justification and the Reformed view. And the debate that followed became known as the monogistic, synergistic controversy, and all the great Protestant reformers maintained Luther's position. When Erasmus wrote his diatribe on free will, he was writing this against Martin Luther. The church had really knew that Luther was making some inroads, and so they wanted the greatest continental humanist to, to take aim at Luther. Erasmus hesitated for a long time, but finally he found what he thought he could conscientiously focus on, and that was Luther's recapture of Augustinian thought that we are absolutely and utterly dependent upon the sovereign working of God and that we have nothing to contribute to our own salvation. And so in this book, Erasmus opted for a view of salvation that says that God offers us grace, but we still have some elements of freedom within us, within us by which we can either choose this grace or reject this grace. And it is our choice that God rewards then with salvation. Erasmus's main thesis in his treatment of the will, this diatribe on the will, is that man has the ability to initiate the relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. He has the ability within himself to believe and through that faith then access all that goes with faith in justification and reconciliation with God. This view of Erasmus is wrong, as I testify to in my book, Converted on LSD, Beard and Strict and Particular Baptists, and our punk opera, Borstal Boy. Dr. Askell explains the semi-Pelagian view of synergism. Synergism comes from a compound word in Greek, together, working together, and it basically teaches that man and God cooperate in the initiation of faith, that man does his part, God does his part, and so it's a cooperative work. The prefix sin means together with, or at the same time, and is used in words like synchronism. Ergos is a Greek word for work. In theological terms, synergism refers to divine and human cooperation. In other words, God and man work together to bring about man's salvation. My testimony is, this is not true. For it is written, it is God that works in a man both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Martin Luther saw this little more than works-based salvation, dressed up in evening clothes. Luther believed the semi-Pelagian view expressed by Erasmus denied original sin, the full impact the fall had on man. Instead of being dead in his trespasses and sins, man was only wounded, according to Erasmus, and therefore could help himself by helping God. Luther understood Erasmus's view made the grace of God a reward for our faith. In other words, man believes the gospel, and as a result of his good work, God gives him grace. And no matter how you slice it, in the end, man deserves some of the credit 
and glory for his salvation. And so it was the glory of God that was at stake in this view of salvation, according to Luther. Against this synergistic view of Erasmus, Luther believed to be born again or born from above was monogistic. Mono is the Greek word for one, or meaning alone, and is the prefix for words like monotheism, the belief in one God. Monogism, then, was the belief that the new birth, or regeneration, was the work of God alone, because man was dead in trespasses and sins. It was God, and only God, that brought man back to life, sending his spirit to quicken or make alive and regenerate and resurrect a man from his spiritual death. It was God, and only God, that brought man back to life. It may be helpful at this point to briefly explain that the terms born again and what we deem as salvation or justification are not synonymous terms. Many modern day Christians equate the two. Luther emphatically taught that fallen man does not have faith in order to be born again, but that man is born again by the Spirit and the Word, and as a result, has faith. Luther rightly understood that when the Bible describes the condition of man in sin, it is a desperate condition. Man in sin is not just sick, he is dead. A sick man can help himself a little bit, but a dead man needs a supernatural, miraculous work of grace to bring him back to life. Luther recognized that, and that's why in his bondage on the will, he considered this to be the most important, significant work that he did, the most important book he ever wrote. And it's also why in the conclusion of that book, he thanks Erasmus for writing against his view and, and commending the freedom of the will. He says, Erasmus, you of all my opponents have really seen the issue. This is the hinge on which all else turns. Luther understood that it's not enough to advocate sola fide, faith alone. But sola fide also is dependent upon sola gratia, grace alone. And the faith which we exercise in Jesus Christ is itself a gift of God. And it is produced in us by the work of the Spirit. And that is the testimony that I make in my book, Converted on LSD, My Life Story, and in our punk rock opera, Borstal Boy, intended to be performed in prisons.